another episode of Rewind, and really, if I was titling this one appropriately, I would have named this one Clusterfuck, because I am about to show you a clusterfuck. The, me the literal dictionary definition of an Overwatch clusterfuck is the fight that's about to happen. <laughs> so, this is Rogue when they're on the attack of Anubis B. Um, they are setting themselves up, and everybody has ultimates pretty much across the board. I mean, AKM doesn't quite have his Death Blossom. Nox is just about to get his Primal Rage. The, I'm, the fucking that doesn't even matter. The I can't even think of the name. The Pulse Bomb. But all the big positional ultimates are up, and this is both of these teams playing actually their positioning around mostly the EMP, but in terms of how the EMP syncs up with Sound Barrier, obviously the two have uh, an antagonistic relationship, to say the least. If you catch the Lucio in the EMP before he uses the Sound Barrier, he's dead. He's going to die, and the, EMP, and the Sound Barrier is not going to get as much value. If you catch the uh, Lucio after he uses the Sound Barrier, then it's ripped off everybody that he applied it to, and then they're also hacked, so you get like double value out of it if you manage to bait the supporters out beforehand. So... Both of these teams obviously aware of this, obviously going to uh, position their Lucios and, in fact, the rest of their team in positions where they're not going to get hit by the EMP. So let's take a look at what happens here. Rogue, again, on the attack, they're going to come through the left-hand side. They're using this triple DPS composition that they like to use when they're attacking on assault maps. Or actually, I think it's only Anubis and... Um, I think it's only Anubis and Volskaya that use this on. I can't say I've seen them use it on Hanamura. Wouldn't really make sense either with the way that map's laid out. Fight, not so much happening around the point, but on the high ground instead. Okay, so Unko coming in from the left-hand side. You can see that uh, some of his team have already engaged. There's Nox, there's Soon. Uh, Nox has already jumped in. He's taking quite a bit of damage. He's going to pop out his Primal Rage fairly early on. Okay, so there we go. He's going into Primal. Both teams are fully aware that they both have Sound Barriers up and both have EMPs up. Here's Nico's positioning. He's going to hide around some of these pillars, uh, see if he can dodge the line of sight, see if he can play as far away, as spread out from the rest of his team as possible so that Karib's EMP doesn't catch on many people. Nox is going to pop his Primal Rage early so that he can't be denied from going into Primal Rage and killed early on in the fight. Verb, uh, sorry, not Verbo, Wins is sat up here and he is going to be way away from all of the rest of his team so that he can come in after the EMP has popped out from Karev. He can run in and sound by everybody to save them. Verbo, though you can't see his outline very well, uh, or indeed at all, I don't really know where he's actually positioned, but he is around the back corner, somewhere near spawn. Again, out of line of sight of Unko, miles away from him, not within the radius of the EMP, and he's going to come in around the corner and soundbar the rest of his team. I think this is... I really just want to highlight this for two reasons. One, because it's an absolute clusterfuck of a fight, and two, because it demonstrates how much better teams have got at positioning themselves around EMP. This meta, it's a lot about uh, individual skill, positioning, and like uh, when you're playing on Assault... Um, a macro understanding of the defensive ultimates that you've got up. And the way that teams have now started positioning themselves is is great around the EMP. So if you watch what happens here, so let's take it slowly because it happens pretty fast. So Nox pops out his Primal Rage. This means that Karev can't really get value out of popping his ultimate onto Nox. Um, they don't have a Diva, so he can't get the hack or, or pop onto them. AKM, again, on the Reaper, not really that bothered if he gets hacked onto. So big targets for hacks would, of course, be Unko. If you manage to get the EMP out onto Unko, uh, then you're going to completely deny the EMP coming out from Rogue. And if you manage to get it onto Winds, that's excellent as well. But look how spread out they are. There's Winds hovering around up here. Uh, here's Unko. He's just shown himself on the point, And he, as soon as he shows himself... Pretty much both, there we go, that was really nicely timed, both uh, Sombras are going to commit their ultimates immediately. So I think Unko is actually out of range here as well, but the way that the netcode works with Overwatch, I'm pretty sure because they pop them almost instantaneous, uh, almost at the exact same time from each other, uh, that both EMPs would have actually gone off as well. I've seen situations where both Sombras use their EMP and one of them uses it and is still hacked. As if, like, they still get the effect from the enemy EMP, but they've managed to use their own. It's really strange. 
So I'm pretty sure that both of these would have worked. You can see they both pretty much happen at the exact same time, kind of slightly earlier. Uh, and they get a good spread across the point. There's quite a number of people caught in this. Uh, it was slightly better coming out from Unko. He manages to catch Envy in this. He also manages to catch Agilities in this. Uh, but the one from Karev is is fairly decent as well. Crucially, neither of the Lucios are hacked because their positioning was so good, and Nico wasn't hacked because his positioning was really good at the beginning as well. Uh, and Fate, actually, uh, somebody that I didn't highlight in this, but watch the timing between Fate and Unko's ultimate. Fate pops his Primal Rage just a second before, so he just pops it just before he gets uh, EMP'd as well. So both uh, Winston's here in the Primal Rage as this happens as well. So both teams playing around this very well. In come the in come the sound barriers as well. Here's Verbo coming around this side. Uh and sorry, Verbo comes around this side rather. That was wins that I pointed out just then. Who's gonna come around this side and see if we can catch it? Where are they? Okay, there's wins. He's about to drop his sound barrier. The rest of his team gets sound barriered. You can see by the the uh the arc, the circle of the sound barrier coming out from verbo that he's positioned over here as well in fact that might be his outline there uh, so he was just hiding around the corner making sure that he didn't get emp'd as well so again both teams really playing the positioning well you can see here that agility's got caught by the emp from unko whereas nico didn't who pulls out his dragon blade and is able to use this to be able to get the kill onto agilities but i gotta say right <laughs> what is going through your head here when both teams within within 0.5 of a second pop off both both primal rages both emps and then both sound barriers i mean the comms must just be madness what is going through the communication there how can you have any sort of uh, an overall plan of what you should genuinely be doing in that situation because both teams are aiming to catch each other in their emps and block each other from using ultimates uh, it's not the plan for either team to use both sound barriers, both EMPs, and it ends up favoring the, the defense in this situation, even though Agilities dies, because Fate gets more out of his Primal Rage. He manages to get the pick onto AKM. Uh, Nox really doesn't do that much damage with his Primal Rage, just kind of knocks a couple of people around, and even though Unko has the control of the pack under there, the defender's spawn advantage and these kind of things, the fact that the fight was fairly even from the beginning ends up playing the way of Immortals. They have slightly better focus fire as well, I would say, and the the fact that they take out the big damage dealer there in AKM and Nico ends up using his entire blade to take down agilities. They end they end up getting the the end of the fight. But what what a ridiculous! I mean, let's just play that again. It's a ridiculous fight as Unko comes in and makes his way around the right hand side, uh, the left hand side through the catacombs. Here, it's just madness that all of these ultimates get popped off all at the same time. How you're supposed to adapt in this situation is kind of beyond me. It really doesn't go to the game plan for either team, but Immortals, I mean, it does kind of play into their wheelhouse because anywhere where they're able to hold on and use that, both of those defensive ults is good for them. But I thought I would highlight this just because the positioning was uh, really good coming out for both teams. And this is how you can play around. If, if either of these teams was playing against a lesser team whose positioning wasn't as good, they would have won the fight. That's, that's the end goal of this, right? Uh, that's what's worth highlighting, is the fact that both teams' positioning was so good that if they'd been playing against any other team that hadn't had such crisp positioning, they would have won that engagement. And so other teams can look at how these teams are setting up and, and how they've set themselves up in terms of being aware of what ultimates are coming in and where they need to position themselves in the fight and think, okay, this is what we need to do, otherwise we're going to get battered in these positions.